Dillard's Pep, the build-up wheat cereal, and invite you to rock it into the future with Tom Corbett. Hey, Cadet. Stand by to raise ship. Blast off. Minus five, four, three, two, one, zero. As roaring rockets blast off to distant planets and far flung stars, we take you to the age of the conquest of space with Tom Corbett. It is a holiday on the planet Venus, a holiday celebrating the date 100 years before when the Earth colonies were granted independence and the cloudy planet took its place in the Solar Alliance. For space cadets Tom Corbett, Roger Manning, and Astro, it is a holiday from duty, the beginning of a week's leave. And in an old and somewhat battered jet launch belonging to Astro's family, the boys skim over the lush Venusian jungles. It's a beautiful day, a perfect beginning for a vacation. Yet, as usual, Roger finds a reason to complain. Look, Astro, as long as I was spin dizzy enough to say I'd go fishing with you, I'd like to get there. Won't this flivver go any faster? Ah, relax, Roger. We'll be in Gold Town soon. There's a difference, you know, Roger, between spaceships and jet launches. Sure, and there's a difference between jet launches and walking, but I'll take walking. Hey, that's an idea, Astro. Why not drop him off in the jungle and let him walk? Suits me. He might last an hour, with luck. <laughs> you Venusian sure are proud of having the crummiest jungle in the solar system. Sure, fighting that jungle made my father and his father before him tough enough to win the independence we're celebrating now. The way I heard it, Venus got its independence because nobody wanted it. I wouldn't mind owning a piece of it, especially like this place where we'll meet Astro's uncle. You mean Gold Town? I never even heard of it before. You will. It already produces about one-fifth of all the gold found on Venus. And a new company has opened up an even richer vein. Almost pure gold and lots of it. Ah, who cares about gold now? It's space full of really important minerals. Oh? Well, Astro, I guess Roger won't want any of those nuggets. Huh? You know, the gold nuggets. Didn't your uncle say we could get a few big ones for souvenirs? Oh, oh yeah, those. But uh, as long as you're not interested, Roger... Roger you're not that... interested. They'd be worth plenty. Gold is... <laughs> hey, you <laughs> jokers aren't kidding me, are you? Where'd you get that idea, space boy? Well, you can pick them up <laughs> big as your head. Pin size. Ah, <laughs> go blow your jets. Hey, Astro, that's the town, those roofs down there? Uh-huh. We'll be there in a second. I'll drop lower so you can get a look at it. I bet the town will be pretty lively today. All the miners and their families will be celebrating the holiday. Yeah, everybody always turns out for... Hey, that's funny. So that's what you call a boom town. Oh, brother, what a dead joint. Yeah, dead is right. And this is always a lively place, even on ordinary days. Hey, this isn't a gag, is it? Well, it can't be. I don't understand. Astro, look down there. Glass all over the street. Storefronts have been smashed in. And there's a wrecked jet car. And another. Land this sliver fast, Astro. We'd better find out what's happened. <laughs> My uncle's store is down the street. Hurry, fellas. Sure, Astro. But there's not a chance of him being there. I never saw anything like this. Why, it's a ghost town. Yes, Roger. Only this ghost town didn't die quietly. I'll say it didn't. Doors broken in, houses wrecked. And everybody gone. Men, women, and kids. What could have happened? Well, gold town surrounded by a jungle full of prehistoric monsters, isn't it? Dinosaurs, Tyrannosaurus. They're not prehistoric on Venus, Roger. Well, that's what I mean. They're alive. Maybe a bunch of them attacked the town. Maybe, but they didn't. Men are behind this. All radio equipment has been destroyed. And you can see there's been some looting. Here's my uncle's store. Come on inside. It's empty, like all the others. And wrecked even worse. The shelves have all been cleaned by the rings of Saturn. Roger, look behind the counter. A man still holding on to an old-fashioned rifle. What is it, Tom? Did you find anything? Better stay back, Astro. No, let me see. Oh, no. Is it your uncle? No. His partner, old Peter Adams. He used to tell me stories when I was a kid, and now... Now, easy, Astro. Get a grip on yourself. Oh, I'm, I'm okay, Tom. But what could have happened here? Where's Uncle Carl and everybody else, and, and who wrecked Gold Town? <laughs> We'll return to the exciting adventures of Tom Corbett, Space Cadet, in just a moment. So stand by. Spaceman, 
Next time you get swell-tasting Kellogg's Pep, you'll get something mighty special right along with it. Just look on the back of the Pep package and you'll see what I mean. Every regular-sized package of Kellogg's Pep has a Space Cadet picture cut out on the back. Now, you want to get the whole collection. Then you can build up a Space Cadet theme showing the cadets ready to blast off on a rocket flight or speeding through outer space in the Polaris. Each Space Cadet picture cutout is made from a detailed full-length photograph, and each picture shows you one of the official Space Cadet uniforms. Start your collection now. Get a package of Kellogg's Pep and have Pep for breakfast every morning. You'll enjoy that rich whole wheat and malt flavor. And with milk and sugar and maybe fruit, Kellogg's Pep is a dish that just starts you off right. When you finish the box, you're all ready to cut out the Space Cadet picture for your collection. Get all four Space Cadet picture cutouts. There's one of Astro, Roger, Tom Corbett, and Dr. Joan Dale. And if you get two of a kind, why, well, you can trade them with your pals for the one that you don't have. It's loads of fun. So start collecting Space Cadet picture cutouts right away. Remember, you get another Space Cadet cutout on the back of every regular size package of the Build-Up Wheat Cereal, Kellogg Pep. P-E-P. Pep. Arriving at the isolated mining village of Gold Town on Venus, where they expected to enjoy a week's leave, the space cadets find the little town has suffered a mysterious raid of almost unbelievable violence. And when Astro leads them to his uncle's store, they make another shocking discovery. The dead body of Uncle Carl's partner. And there is no sign of any living person. The town is completely deserted. We have to get word to the solar guard, fellas, and that means flying back the way we came in the jet launch. This is too big a job for us to tackle alone. Well, okay, but first I'm going to fly over the mining and processing area. It's in another clearing north of here. North? But that's out of our way. It won't take long. And if there's any reason for this, it must be the gold. Yeah, makes sense all right, Astro. Besides, maybe we'll find something definite to report to the guard. For you to report. If any of the murdering rats are up there, I'm staying here. Sorry, I'll face happy, Astro. You can't fight a gang all by yourself, even if your uncle is captured. Oh, no, no. It's, it's not just him or, or Peter Adams. It's all the people of Gold Town. They're Venusians like me, and I know most of them. I, I was brought up here, and... Oh, well, I guess you fellas can't understand. I think we do, Astro. Come on, let's get moving. We're almost over the mining area, fellas. Keep your eyes peeled. Hey, look over there to the left. There seems to be a break in the jungle. It must be the clearing. Yeah, I see some chimneys. Well, that's the processing plant, Roger. The mines are right near it. Hey, look. There's a big crowd down there. That's our answer, Astro. Those must be the people of Gold Town loading those two space freighters with our men all around to make them do it. The dirty space crawlers stealing all the gold and making our people do the work for them. They have other workers, too. Look, giant robots. Like the ones we ran into on Mercury, I thought the men there must be part of a larger gang. Hey, galaxy, how did they get here? Who cares? They're here and they're going to be tough to link. Guns and robots. No wonder they were able to capture everybody. And Peter Adams tried to stop them with a rifle. Hey, wait a minute. I think we've been spotted. They're looking up here. Maybe we'll scare them off. No, Astro. Look, there's a rocket gun mounted in the clearing. They're training it on us. Start dodging, Astro. Yes, get this crate out of here fast. Okay, hang on. Doc, here comes a warhead. That was too close. Tom, maybe you'd better take the control. Too late to switch now. Just keep dodging and open the jets wide. out of sight, fellas. I guess we're safe now. That was a nice job of tree-hopping, Astro. You kept them from getting a good shot at us. Well, thanks, Tom, but we may not be in the clear yet. You mean the robots? Yeah, if the gang sends them after us, we'll be in trouble. Jumping Jupiter, I forgot about them. They could catch this bag of bolts and make scrap of it in two minutes. They sure could, but I don't see any of them following us, and the killers should have them in the air by now. Well, they would if they wanted to use them. Maybe they don't want to tip their hand by showing the robots. Or maybe they didn't want to take them off the job. Looks as if they were getting pretty near the end. Well, maybe. It's funny reasoning, but lucky for us. Now we can go and get the solar guard after them. Yeah, you do that. I'll circle back and land as close as I can. Then you can take over, Tom. You mean you still want to try and fight that gang? I have to. Don't be a jerk, Astro. What can you do against those robots? Probably not much, Roger. But as you said, it looks as if they're getting near the end of the loading. Those space rats will be gone before the solar guard can get here. Well, so what? Why toss your life away to try and save some gold? It's not the gold, Roger. It's all those people. 
You remember the killers on Mercury didn't like to leave any witnesses. This bunch probably feels the same way. You'd think they'd murder the whole population of a town? Yep. After they're through using them as slaves. You may be right at that, Astro. We'll have to try to help them. We? Sure, I'm staying with you. Roger can go after the guard. Wait a minute, Junior. If you two bubbleheads can be heroes, so can I. I'm joining the party. Uh-uh. Sorry, Roger, but our chances will be pretty slim, and someone has to send out a warning. Oh, space dust. Why should I be Don't the one to argue, in... Roger? There's no time. All right. Blast it. I'll be the messenger, boy. Good. And while you're the delivering, keep your fingers crossed for us. <laughs> This is a tough jungle you grow here, Astro. Must have taken us half an hour to come a few hundred yards. Yeah. It's hard going, Tom. It's swell of you to do this when you're not even a Venusian. Oh, what of it? I'm a human. Forget it, pal, and keep your voice down. We're at the edge of the clearing. Look at those space crawlers. They're driving the people like cattle. Those gold bars and bags of ore must be heavy, too. But with gunmen everywhere, the people can't even rest. Hey, there's Uncle Carl. The gray-haired man, see? Uh Uh-huh. He looks pretty old to be carrying a load like that. He can take it, I guess. He's hard as nails. Tom, look. That man, he collapsed. Great Jupiter. One of those thugs is kicking the poor guy. Kill the dirty space crawler. Oh, Astro, stay down. Tom, did you hear that? They are going to kill the... Let me go! Oh, it would be suicide. And the only way we can help these people is to stay alive and think, but fast. Oh! Right back where we started, Tom. We've been all around the clearing, and there's no way to break that up except... No, Astro. For the last time, we can't go charging in blindly. If we wait, we may still get a break. Or, best of all, the solar guard may get here. You're just kidding yourself. One freighter's loaded already. The other's almost finished. Roger can never reach them in time. Wait a minute, Astro. Listen. A ship coming this way. Hey, you're not supposed to keep your fingers crossed. There. I see it now, Tom. It's a space yacht. It's armed, and it's coming straight for the clearing. I think it's going to attack the killers. No, no, it's not, Astro. Take a look at them. Huh? They've made room for it to land. They've been expecting it. Blast it. More guns against us. In a spot like this, a few more won't matter, I guess. But maybe if they sit down close to the jungle. Oh, they won't. It's coming in right in the center of the clearing. I wonder who those characters are. The leaders, I guess. Look, two men are getting out. Hey, they're carrying someone. Great. Blazing comets. It's Roger. He's unconscious. How in blazes did they get him? He was blasting back to headquarters. Must have intercepted him and shot him down. That's why those robots weren't sent after us. What do you mean? That armed yacht must have been on patrol. And this bunch just radioed an alert for the flipper. Well, that settles it, Tom. The solar guard won't be coming. Our last chance blasted into space dust. Yes. I guess it's up to us now. Well, you win, Astro. We'll make that rush you've been fugging for. At least we'll go down fighting. That's what I've been waiting for. Come on, let's ease forward as close as we can get. Follow me. A little more to the left, Tom. We'll be covered by that tree. Check. Hey, down, quick. What's the matter? One of those thugs is wandering over this way. Think he saw us? No. No, he's just carrying a radio control for one of the robots. He'll be passed in a couple of seconds. Then we can make our break. No, we don't have to, Astro. This is our break. What? If we could grab him. We'd have his ray gun and a robot, too. Hey, that's right. Come on, fella. This way. Get a little closer. Come on. Blast it. How do you like that? He sat down. He's going to set up the robot control there. But he's at least 20 feet out in the clearing. Well, bad as it is, we're not going to get a better chance. Let's go out and get him. Yeah, I guess there's no other way. Blast it. If we only had a rope. A rope? The rope's hanging all around you. Where? These Venusian jungle vines. They're as good as rope any time. Well, can we hack off a piece, a long piece? Sure. They're brittle down near the root. I can snap a whole vine off. Wait a minute. There. Hold still. The Joker heard you. He's turning around. Uh Uh-oh. Quiet. Okay. Relax. He turned back. I guess he thought it was just an animal. Yeah. Now, come on. Help me strip off the leaves, but quietly. Look. Would you mind telling me what we're doing? Going fishing, Astro. 
So you see this noose I'm tying in the end? With luck, we can toss it over his head from here, yank it tight so he can't squawk, and just haul him in. Don't you think the other jokers will see it? Yeah, maybe, but the odds are better doing this than busting out by clearing ourselves. I guess you're right. And the robot control is attached to a strap around his neck. It should come right along with him. Okay. Are you ready? Yep. <clears throat> this noose should hold. But let me try to snag it. I've got longer arms so I can reach out for it. Okay, Astro. Shoot. Here goes. <laughs> you got him. Oh, keep it tight around his neck. Here he comes. And nobody's looking this way. Yeah, but the strap on the rubber control broke. It's fallen off. I get it. No, Astro, don't let go of the mine. Keep pressure on. Help. Hey, over here. Astro, Astro, shut him up, right? <laughs> He's out. It's too late. They heard him. Come on back. <laughs> Things are getting hot. Yeah, they're using heat right here. Come on, let's beat it. Here, I got his gun. You take it. Bang. <laughs> You winged a couple of them. Yeah, there's so many of them I can't miss. Besides, they can't see us here. We have that much advantage. They're falling back, Tom. We're beating them. We're... Great Jupiter. What's the matter? The robots. They're sending the robots in after us. Well, the gun's no good against them. Look at them come. That does it, Tom. We're lit. <laughs> Turn to the exciting adventures of Tom Corbett, Space Cadet, in just a moment. So stand by. K Day, K Day is here. K Day, K Day is here. All over the country, the word is going out by telegraph, by radio, by telephone. The news is spreading like wildfire. Yes, K Day is here. And that means that every single one of Kellogg's cereals has been dressed up in a brand new package. And now that K-Day is here, you can see those new Kellogg packages right at your grocery store. They're new, they're fun, they're exciting. And are they different? You'll see pictures of cowboys, fellows and girls playing games. You'll even see the space cadets. Every one of these new Kellogg packages has something exciting and different. So don't delay. Chart a course to the grocery store just as soon as you can. See the better-than-ever Kellogg cereals and newer than new Kellogg packages. Then you'll be saying, Did you see what I saw? Kellogg's on display. In brand new boxes, bright and gay. These famous cereals come your way. Go see this eyeful. The Kellogg's All-Star Breakfast Show has a cheerful look. A lift for you. Start you out with a hoop de doo Kellogg's for breakfast and a happy, happy day. Get a big supply today, today. Yes, for a happy day, have a happy breakfast. With the best tasting cereals ever. Kellogg. In a desperate attempt to rescue the people of Gold Town, Tom and Astro almost succeed in gaining control of one of the gang's giant robots. But when the plan fails and the killers are alerted, the cadets are seemingly trapped and the giant, indestructible robots are sent crashing into the jungle after them. Tom, we're finished. If we can't stop those robots, they'll run us down. Yes, if we just stay in front of them, Astro. But they can't think for themselves. And the men operating them will expect us to run back into the jungle. This is a chance to pull a fast one. Ow! Pop up that man you knocked out. Now put my hat on him. That'll delay them for a minute. Okay. Sir, uh, come on. Where are we going? We'll skirt around the edge of the clearing. But they're watching for us now. Not this way. Everybody's looking in the direction the robots are taking. Where we were. Well, they're bound to find out we've given them the slip. Sure, but not in time, I hope. We'll cut around to that loaded freighter, the one nearest the jungle, and climb in while they're looking the other way. We can't, Tom. The guards are still in the airlock. They won't use it. Then how You're a power man, Astro. Can't you think of another way to get in? Hey, wait a minute. The rocket tube's in the clean-out hatch. Right. We'll have to slide through the tube fast. There'll be radioactivity. It's worth it to get to those big guns. You bet it is. Step it up, Tom. We've got to work fast. <laughs> The main deck's empty. Climb in. Wow, we made it. And those space rats think we're still in the jungle. We'll show them how wrong they are. Let me at those rocket guns. Right. I'll take this one. You get on the starboard gun mount. All set. But, Tom, be careful not to hurt any of the gold towners. Don't worry. First, we'll pick off the gang's heavy stuff. The rocket gun mounted in the clearing and the robot. I'll knock off the gun. You work on the robot. Check. Ready? Fire! the gun. Nothing but junk now. Good. One robot's down, but they're tough. You better get on them, too. Right. Look at those space rats. They don't know what's happening. They're going crazy. I wonder how they like being on the receiving end for a change. 
Hey, Tom, some of the gold towners are slugging their guards. They're getting into the scrap. Watch your fire. Uh-oh, there's a robot getting into the fight. It's over on your side, Tom. Blast it. No, wait. It's going after the killer. One of the gold towners must have grabbed the control. Hey, hey, what do you know, Astro? Look. It's Roger. He's all right. Hey, look. Sounds like Jess. It is. The space yacht is blasting off. Well, nail it, Astro. Pull it off. Ah, it's too fast and heading straight up. Can't get these guns to a sharp enough angle. No, they're gone. Yeah, too bad we knocked out the blaster in the clearing. That might have been... Great galaxy. Now the other freighter is taking off on the other side of us. Swing your gun around quick. Forget it, Astro. We're too late. Blasted a few seconds sooner, we could have clobbered them. A freighter can't climb like a yacht. That's why the yacht went first, to draw our attention. Well, there's just one thing to do. Go after them right now. Oh, we can't, Tom. Why not? The gold towners are swarming all around our ship. In fact, they're coming in. And look who's leading the crowd. Hiya, Roger. Hiya, fellas. Nice going. We really lowered the boom on those crumbs, didn't we? Hey, you okay, Roger? Sure, it'll take more than those space crawlers to get rid of me. He's okay. And listen, I saw your uncle. You did? Don't worry about him. He's in great shape. Right now, he's helping some of the wounded. Oh, I want to go out and talk to him. All right, Tom? Sure. But hurry back. We still have to nail those killers. Oh, that's fine with me. How about you, Roger? Naturally, Junior. After all, that's what I came to Venus for. A nice, quiet vacation. Don't miss the next action-packed episode with Tom Corbett, Space Cadet, on Thursday when the crew of the Polaris search for the killers but find danger in part two of Holiday of Terror. Tune in same time, same station on Thursday for the next thrilling interplanetary adventure with Tom Corbett, Space Cadet. Brought to you by Kellogg's Pep, the build-up wheat cereal. Tom Corbett, Space Cadet, starring Frankie Thomas, can also be seen on television and appears in the comic sections of many of America's leading newspapers. Look for it daily and in weekend editions. Featured in today's cast are Jan Merlin and Al Markham. Today's program was written by Don Hughes, directed by Drex Hine. Jackson Beck speaking. Stand by to raise ship. Blast off. Minus five, four, three, two, one, zero! As roaring rockets blast off to distant planets and far-flung stars, we take you to the age of the conquest of space with... Tom Corbett, face to death. Arriving in the small Venusian settlement of Goldstown for a quiet holiday, face cadet Tom Corbett, Roger Manning, and Astro found themselves battling a gang of killers who were trying to hijack the entire supply of gold from the neighboring mine. Despite the menace of giant robots, the boys managed to board one of the armed freighters, and in the fight that followed, the gang was beaten, but they escaped with half of their loot in two remaining ships, another freighter and the space yacht. Fearing they would escape into space, the cadets followed them and the captive freighter still laden with gold. And now, far above Venus, they try to find some trace of the enemy ships. Control to radar bridge. Check in. What do you want, Tom? Haven't you picked up those ships on the radar yet, Roger? Look, Tom, I'm good, but I'm not a genius. I just got up here. Give me a chance. Okay, okay, Hotshot. Don't use your tubes. They shouldn't be too far away. We blasted off only 15 minutes after they did. You just hold your rockets, Junior. As soon as I spot them, I'll let you know. In transmission. Hi, Tom. How are we doing? Haven't picked up the trail yet, Astro. How's the power department? Oh, very good for a freighter. It's a power booster gimmick for blast-off that's new to me. Hey, another special gimmick. This is some ship. What do you mean? The space radio they've got. A radio? Hey, have you contacted the Solar Guard? Well, that's just it. We can't. You mean it isn't working? Well, not exactly. Here, the receiver's set for Venusport. Now, listen. But that's just hash. Uh Uh-huh. The set scrambles a regular broadcast into what you heard. And Roger says it's the same way in reverse with the transmitter. 
When we call the guard, all they hear is a faint normal static, not even annoying enough to check on. Oh, I get it. On the same kind of receiver, the message would be in the clear, huh? Right. Automatic scrambler and descrambler circuits. <laughs> First I've ever seen. Quite a system, eh, Astro? That gang never had to worry about their messages being intercepted. Cold-blooded killers, and yet they have things like this. To say nothing of the robots. They're gonna be tough to lick. We have reached control deck. Check in. Control deck, I. Find them, Roger. I've got news for you. I scanned the whole area in front of us and on each side. There are no ships anywhere. What? Those killers have disappeared from space. Oh, great. Don't tell me they have another gimmick. Something that makes them invisible. <laughs> to the exciting adventures of Tom Corbett, Space Cadet, in just a moment. So stand by. Spaceman, how would you like to have pictures of all your favorite Space Cadets? Well, just listen. Right now at your grocery store, you'll find a picture cutout of one of your favorite Space Cadets on the back of every regular-sized package of Kellogg's Pep. Now just think, besides getting the best-tasting cereal you ever put a spoon to, you get a picture cutout on the back of the package. Say, that's really something. You can get a full-length cutout of Roger Manning, Astro, Tom Corbett, and Dr. Joan Dale. And when you cut each picture out, you can mount them on a stand and put them in a space cadet setting. Draw a picture of the Polaris, and then show Astro climbing up to the power deck. You can show Roger on the radar bridge and Tom Corbett on the control deck. Each cadet picture shows an official Space Academy uniform, too, even a spacesuit. It's a swell collection, and it's yours with a swell-tasting cereal, Kellogg's Pep. Ask Mom to get Kellogg's Pep at the grocery store. Then have Pep for breakfast every morning. While you're scooping up that swell whole wheat and malt flavor, you can be looking at the space cadets on the back of the package. Then when the box is empty, you're all ready to cut out the picture and set it up. So don't delay. Start your space cadet collection right away. Get a package of the build-up wheat cereal, Kellogg's Pep. (laughs) P-E-P. through space far above Venus in the captured freighter, Tom, Roger, and Astro are confident that they can track down the criminals who brought death and destruction to Gold Town. Until suddenly, Roger reports from the radar bridge that the killers have disappeared from space. That's impossible, Roger. Ships can't just disappear. If you don't believe me, Junior, suppose you get on this radar and check up yourself. Well, all right, all right. Don't overheat your tubes. I know you've been riding that scanner, but it... Well, it's fantastic. Well, they could just be further ahead than we figured, Tom. We're packing all that gold, and there's a lot of inertia to overcome. No, Astro. Their freighter has about the same load. The space yacht could go much faster, but... We got it, you guys. If they went twice as fast, they still wouldn't be on a range so quick. Then, with all the scientific gadgets this gang has, maybe... Maybe I was right. That they really can disappear? I doubt that, Astro. We've missed a point somehow. I didn't. There are no ships within radar range. Wait a minute. Sure there are. Only radar can't spot them. What are you talking about? Well, there must be some ships flying over Venus right now on regular flights. But with the whole planet behind them, they wouldn't show up on our screen. Naturally not, Junior, but we're talking about ships in space. Are we? Suppose they double back to Venus. But why, when they just escaped from there? Because it's the last place anyone would look for them. We didn't, but we'd better start now. Astro, get below and give me power on the steering vanes. We've got to turn this crate around fast. Right. Ready in a minute. You know, Roger, that gang must have a hideaway. Probably they've nearly reached it by now. Yeah, but to cover all of Venus is a big order, Tom. Well, maybe we can pick up something on this radio receiver of theirs. Go on. They wouldn't be stupid enough to use radios. They might. No ordinary set can intercept those scrambled transmissions. And they don't know that we're after them in one of their own ships. By the rings of Saturn, maybe you're right. Come on down here and start sweeping the radio band, Roger, and let's hope we get a break. Getting anything? Not yet, Astro. Roger's been sweeping the whole band, and he's rigged up some instruments to get a fix on any signal. Hey, wait a minute. I think I'm picking up something now. Orders to open the entrance at 30 seconds. Hey, listen, quiet, Astro. Take the freighter in first. We will follow. And transmission. That's it. We nearly missed it. I'll say. Sounds like they're ready to duck into their hideout. 
Did you get a fix, Roger? Not a real one. Impossible without triangulation. All I can show you is the general area on this map of Venus. Let's see now. It's about in this direction. Maybe 50 miles either way. And the distance, well, that could be anywhere from here to, say, uh, here. Great. Jupiter, we'll have to cover about 5,000 square miles. Best I can do, Junior. And it's right in the middle of the worst jungle on Venus. Well, at least we know the area. Maybe we can spot their installation. It, it doesn't look too hopeful, but we have to try. Full space feet, fellas. Let's take a shot at it. <laughs> Inches are there in 5,000 square miles of jungle, Tom. Too many, Roger. There sure are when you have to look over every one of them, even from up here. But you ought to feel at home, Astro. Ah, oh, stow it, Hotshot. To listen to you, anybody think there was nothing on Venus but jungle? If I didn't think so before, I sure do now. Space dust. I'm sick of this, too. Tom, we've covered the whole area without spotting any camouflage for their hideout. We're on the wrong track. Not if the installation is underground, because then nature furnishes the camouflage. Underground? Here? Why not? If they're underground, we can't possibly spot them. We might as well pick up our marbles and go home. No, we can't leave. Do you realize that the gold towners must have contacted the solar guard by now? The guard's probably headed out into space right now for nothing. Yeah, I know. Well, let's get out of here and call them back. Roger, if we leave, the killers will probably pop out and really get away this time. Why should they give up their cozy little nest? Don't you suppose they've spotted us prowling around here? They won't figure we're just admiring the scenery. Tom's right. They're probably just waiting for us to beat it so they can make a break. But we can't stay here forever. Our fuel won't hold out. I've been thinking about that, too. If we could only get them to come out while we're still here. Fat chance. Well, there's only one thing left. You work your great brain while Astro and I work over the radio. Yeah, we can try to change those scrambling circuits so we can call the guard. Think you can get it done in time? No, but at least we'll be doing something. Well, go ahead. No, don't touch it. Watch it, Astro. The boy's gone space happy. The radio, that's it. That's the way to get those snakes out of their hole. What do you mean, Tom? Look, we know we can't contact the solar guard on this trick set, but the gangsters don't know we know it. You follow me? Yeah, what about it? Well, if I pretend I'm trying to call the guard and slip in some information to interest the killers, they'll hear it and come out with a ship. How do you know they'll hear it? I don't, but I imagine they're listening. And what's this information that's so interesting? Just listen. Turn on the set, Roger. Solar Guard Headquarters from Space Cadet Tom Corbett. Come in, please. Solar Guard from Cadet Corbett. Acknowledge. We still can't hear your answer, but assume you can hear us. I request emergency priority on the following message. We have located the Gold Town criminals in Venus Sector 92 Southwest and are patrolling the area. Please send help immediately. Repeat, immediately. Our position is dangerous. We have a full cargo of gold aboard and all gun controls are jammed. Come at once. End transmission. Well, that does it, fellas. I hope. Hey, what was that about our gun controls being jammed? That was the clincher, Astro. If those yellow space rats think we're helpless, they should walk into our trap. And we're the bait, huh? Right. But sometimes a trap doesn't go off. And then the bait gets eaten. Tom, Roger. Take a look through this viewport. What's the matter? Something mighty funny. Way over there, a whole section of jungle is sinking. The underground entrance. It worked. They're coming out. There's a ship blasting off. Hey, it's the space yacht. Good, I hoped it would be. Yeah, that yacht can run circles around this tub. But we have more firepower, and they think we don't have any. Don't worry, Roger. Who's worried? Great galaxy. The freighter's coming out, too. Uh Uh-oh, now I am worried. I didn't think they'd use the ship with the gold. Looks as if they've managed to unload it somehow. It's making good time. And we've still got our cargo. That means even the freighter can outrun and outmaneuver us, Tom. Yes, I'd better change our course. Look as if we're making a run for it, so they don't suspect our guns are really working. I'd better get below and start nursing the rockets. Okay, Astro. One thing we'll need is plenty of power. Go get it, Tom. The yacht's drawn way ahead of the freighter now. Well, that won't do. We'll have to get them together. But if we could pick off the yacht first, then the then freighter... the freighter would know our guns are working. I want it to come as a little surprise to both of them. Okay, Tom. Power deck ready. Right, Astro. Full space speed. All right. Full space speed. Now we'll climb. Uh, she's pretty sluggish. Hey, Tom. The yacht fired a warhead when they saw us move. 
We're still out of range, though. We won't be for long. Are they climbing after us? Sure, and their rate of climb is faster. Power deck. Power deck, all right. Stand by steering rockets, Astro. Two turns to port, as sharp as this ship can make. Then we'll be heading back where we came from. That's the idea. Get ready. The yacht's coming on range now. Catching up fast. And now's the time. Okay, Astro. Short blast for first turn. Coming up. This is like turning a barge. There. All right, Astro, again. Okay. Coming up. Baby, get around. Roger, where's the yacht? A little above and behind us. Pretty close. Fine, I'm afraid I... That was her getting into the act. We'd better get on the starboard gun. I'll take them. You take the port side. The yacht will be there in any second. But don't fire yet. Wow, that one rocked us. What are you waiting for, Tom? See the whites of their eyes? Almost. I'm cutting right between them. We can fire from both sides. Great idea. If they don't get us first. Coming up. You ready? Sure. Um... Hey, the yacht's starting to die. Okay, open fire. <laughs> Blast it, miss. I nailed the freighter astern. She's down to our speed now. Tom, look, they're sending robots after us. Uh, a robot shouldn't be able to hurt a ship this size. Don't bother with them unless they fly straight into a gun. Okay. The yacht's coming back and the freighter's turning. They're going to try and finish us. <laughs> They've got us bracketed. Astro, give me a blast. Okay. Hey, Tom, the robot. <laughs> What in space was that? Astro, the rockets have stopped. What happened? I had to shut them off. The gang sent a robot square into the rocket tube. Jammed it there. If I held power, we'd blow up. The galaxy, without power, we can't maneuver. We can't even stay in the air. The corroborate. Keep firing, Roger. Okay. Astro, come up and help him. we we'll have to take the ship in for a crash landing. Landing, Tom. I was lucky to find a clear spot in this jungle, except that they'll be able to spot us here. They have. They're following us down. Oh, blasted. Look at our guns. They're wrecked. We can't fire back. Well, there's nothing left to fire anyway, Tom. What? We're out of ammunition. Oh, but a couple of warheads. All right. We'll have to get out and hide in the jungle. The ship's sealed over on the main hatch, so we'll use the emergency. Come on, hurry up. But, Tom, the jungle's hopeless. We'll die there, even if the killers don't come after us. It's better than this. Go on, Tom. Open the hatch, will you? Oh, I can't. It's jammed. Oh, great. And there's no other way out. What about the rocket tube? That's blocked by the robot. Those space crawlers really have us now. We're trapped. <laughs> message for all spacemen from Tom Corbett, Space Cadet. Hi there. A lot of you spacemen have been writing in asking for pictures. Pictures of Dr. Dale, Astro, Roger, and myself. Well, the Kellogg people heard about all this, so just listen to what they did. They put pictures of all of us right on different packages of Kellogg's Pep. And not only that, but the pictures are put on so you can cut them out and stand them up. But these swell picture cutouts are only part of it. The whole Pep package is new. As a matter of fact, all the Kellogg cereals are dressed up in bright new packages. No fooling. Every single one of them. Wait till you see the big lineup of all your Kellogg favorites at your grocery store. The best tasting cereals. The best looking packages. And every one of them Kellogg. That's right, spaceman. It's K-Day at the grocery store. All the Kellogg cereals have new faces, new pictures, new exciting packages. Why, people are even singing about it. Did you see what I saw? Kellogg's on display. In brand new boxes, bright and gay, these famous cereals come your way. Go see this eyeful. The Kellogg's All-Star Breakfast Show has a cheerful look, a lift for you. Starts you off with a hoop to do. Kellogg's for breakfast and a happy, happy day. Get a big supply today, today. Yes, for a happy day, have a happy breakfast with a best-tasting cereal ever, Kellogg's. <laughs> Trap 
Trapped in the battered wreckage of their ship after crash landing in the Venusian jungle, Tom, Roger, and Astro are unable to return their enemy's fire. With every exit sealed by the crash, they face certain death as warheads burst all around and the killers come roaring down out of the sky. This is a great way for us to wind up like rats in a trap. We're not finished yet, Roger. There's no way out, Tom. Those dirty space crawlers are going to blow us to space dust. Maybe not. Come on, this way. Run! Where are we headed for? For the cargo section, where the gold is stored. What good is that? There's no hatch there. I know. Here. Go on in. Fast. Okay, here we are. So what? Look, through this viewport. The up and the have almost reached the ground. How could they miss if they really wanted to blow up the ship? Maybe they're just playing games. No, they want to kill us, all right. But not by blowing everything sky high, including the gold. They figure blasts and fragments from the warheads will do it. Well, they're right. But here, with the gold, we have a chance. The bags of dust will protect us for a while. Tom, what's the difference? We're still trapped. But maybe we won't be. The same gold that helps us must be tearing the ship apart. Tearing the... What are you talking about? Well, look how all that weight has shifted. It's bearing down on a bulkhead that's already been weakened by the crash. And now with those warheads blasting all around us, something has to give. The hull plates. Yeah, you're right, Tom. They're buckling. And they've sprung a seam over here. It's only an inch, but... Brother, that was a bad one. No, a good one. The seam's wide open. There's our exit. And on the side, away from the gang. They'll never see us through all the smoke and dust. Okay, let's go. Even that jungle looks good to me now. Go ahead. Hurry. I'll be with you as fast as I can. Huh? You're not staying here, are you? Yeah. There's something else to do. But come, the killers are landing. Don't argue. Get it going. Okay, it's your war. Come on, Astro. I'll join you soon. I hope. Why doesn't Tom come? How long have we been waiting here? I don't know, Astro. Five minutes, ten. Seems like hours. Even the freighter's landed now. And neither ship is even bothering the fire anymore. Well, why should they? They're sure we're dead. But they're sending the robots in first, just in case. Roger, maybe Tom really is dead? Yeah. Hurt, anyway. With those big torches, the robots are cutting through the hull like butter. They'll be inside the ship in a second. Tom won't have a chance. We have to go after it. We won't have a chance either, but... Oh, let's go. Wait, Roger! Astro! Tom! Tom, you're all right. We thought you were killed. I'll later. Hit the dirt fast. What's the matter? They spot you now. Fly flat and dig yourself in as much as you can. But what for? No time to explain. The robots are in the ship now. What difference does it make? Hey, what was that? They can't be fired. Get your heads down! Great Jupiter. What happened, Tom? Take a look. The ship we were in, it's blown up. Robots and men scattered like toys. Tom, what in the universe did you do? Tell you later. First, let's make sure those space crawlers are licked. Once and for all. Well, this is one bunch of killers that won't do any killing anymore. Most of them won't even wake up until they're in a prison hospital. And some won't ever wake up. Yes, the ones who were too anxious to get at the gold they'd murdered for. Speaking of gold, Tom, I've heard of men rich enough to throw a little around. But I bet you're the first who ever scattered a whole shipload. <laughs> Will you tell us now what you did? Oh, it was simple enough. I just rigged up a, well, I guess you'd call it an atomic booby trap. Booby trap? Uh-huh. I dismantled the last two warheads. Fixed them so the robots would set them off when they got to the power deck. That was the first explosion. And it triggered the reactor pile. I pulled out the dampers before I left. So the whole pile went. Mm -hmm. Wow, you sure did a job, Tom. Good, Junior. Couldn't have done better myself. Yo, why you couldn't even do that? <laughs> Forget it, Astro. Come on, let's see if one of those ships can still get off the ground. I hope so. I'd sure like to get out of here. Yep. Get this finished up and then back to Gold Town. You think your uncle will still take us on that fishing trip? Sure, just wait till you tie into those Venusian mutation salmon. Sounds like real sport. Hey, you're not kidding. Are those salmon of the... Jupiter, how can you two think about anything as dull as fishing at a time like this? Dull? Why, Roger, there's nothing in the universe more exciting than having a fighting fish at the end of your line. Right, Astro? Sure, that's one time you really know you're in a scrap. With a fish, huh? Well, that kind of talk after all this excitement certainly proves what I always said. You guys are crazier than a Martian platypus with two-headed fleas. Don't miss the next action.
action-packed adventure with Tom Corbett, Space Cadet, on Tuesday, when the crew of the Polaris returns from Venus, only to find themselves threatened with death as they try to solve the riddle of Astro. Tune in, same time, same station on Tuesday for the next thrilling interplanetary adventure with Tom Corbett, Space Cadet. Brought to you by Kellogg's Pep, the build-up wheat cereal. Tom Corbett, Space Cadet, starring Frankie Thomas, can also be seen on television and appears in the comic sections of many of America's leading newspapers. Look for it daily and in weekend editions. Featured in today's cast were Jan Merlin and Al Markham. Today's program was written by Don Hughes, directed by Drex Hines. Jackson Beck speaking. Kellogg's Raisin Bran has a secret. Kellogg's Raisin Bran has a secret. And what a secret. In Kellogg's Raisin Bran, the tasty raisins are dipped in honeycomb. That means plumper, more tender raisins, along with delicious golden crisp bran flakes. Both fruit and cereal, all in one box. And no other raisin brand but Kellogg's gives you the tender goodness of raisins dipped in honeycomb. That's Kellogg's secret. So for your breakfast, make sure you get Kellogg's because... Kellogg's raisin brand has a secret. This program came to you from New York. America is sold on ABC, the American Broadcasting Company.